Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, PBI Bank, Quillen Leather and Tack, Spendthrift Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week, featuring a track record performance in the Grade 2 Bayacoa Stakes at Los Alamitos and a former claimer turned marathon stakes winner in the Grade 3 Valedictory Stakes at Woodbine. We begin with sprinting fillies and mares at Turfway Park in the Holiday Inaugural Stakes. Shrinking Violet, the 5-2 favorite, Mike Battaglia picks up the call. Quick opening quarter for Inna Jiff, who has the lead, still there by two. Then it's Shrinking Violet right there in second. Gaining ground up on the outside, Miss Super Quick. Then here comes Sweet Cassiopeia with her run from the inside. High Techno Weenie also gains, but it's still in a jiff. As they move into the stretch, Shrinking Violet second. High Techno Weenie is gaining ground from the inside. On the outside, she's super quick in a jiff. High Techno Weenie on the outside, Shrinking Violet. That's a photo. And here's another look at that photo finish. It's 13 to 1 in a jiff and Rolando Aragon with the lead between horses. 9 to 1 High Techno Weenie and Perry Utes coming up the rail. And the favorite Shrinking Violet flying on the outside under Alban Jimenez. But in a jiff holds on to take the photo by a nose over High Techno Weenie, who has a head on Shrinking Violet in that three way photo. Six furlongs in 109 and 2. Stakes placed at Indiana Grand during the summer. In a Jiff was last seen finishing 10th in the Franklin County Stakes, sprinting over the Keeneland turf. This was her first stakes victory. The four-year-old filly by Saintly Look was bred in Indiana by Jeff and Sherry Greenhill. Jeff Greenhill also trains at a Jeff, who has earned $200,000 for Greenhill Racing Stable. To Laurel Park for the Willa on the Move Stakes, Lady Sibilia, the 6-5 to five favorite, Dave Rodman picks up the call. Lady Sibilia pouring on her speed. 22 and 3 was the opening quarter. On this wet going, got a four length advantage. On the chasing disco chick, Galliana is third. Red's round table is fourth. She's ordained, is driven out wide there in the fifth spot as they get to the top of the lane. In the meantime, in Charisse is down there saving some ground, cutting that corner as they make the turn for home. Lady Sibilia in a 45 and four half mile with a four length lead on disco chick in second and Galliana toward the center of the track. In Charisse is next and Disco Barbie on for a minor share but no doubt about it Lady Sibilia the ladies long gone Lady Sibilia in the Willa on the move stakes and she is moving right along to a seven length win Lady Sibilia by Ashford Stud Stag and Majestic Warrior draws off to defeat Disco Barbie officially by seven and three quarter legs Horacio Caramanos aboard in 110 and 2 a 102 brisk speed rating Third in this race last year, Lady Sibilia makes it four wins in five starts this season. The Robin Graham trainee was coming off a four and three quarter length score in an optional claimer over the track and trip. The four year old filly was bred in Kentucky by her owner, Mrs. Frank Wright. Lady Sibilia has earned $278,000. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com slash APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year. Now including SAR stats. To Aqueduct for sprinting fillies and mares in the Garland of Roses Stakes. Willett, the 6-5 to five favorite, John Embrial has the call. The quarter went in 22 and four fifth seconds. Bridge Hampton gets clear of winning image. It's Bridge Hampton in front by two, midway on the turn. Winning image is second by three. Willett is now being asked for run and is in third down on the inside is Janata, then expression and sounds of the city they're at the top of the stretch half mile in 46 and four fifth seconds here's winning image now to reclaim the lead will it on the outside Janata is coming through down towards the rail and expression on the outside they move for the 16th pole winning image 
Expression. And will it? Sounds of the City is fourth. Expression on the outside. Expression to win the Garland of Roses. Expression by Shadwell Farm Snag and Inva Soar rallies to defeat winning image by three quarters of a length. Manuel Franco aboard in 113 and 1. Stakes placed at Belmont Park last year. The Reform Kramer gets her first stakes victory. The five year old mare was bred in Kentucky by Stone Farm and Joseph Sutton. Owner and trainer Charlton Baker claimed the inner track specialist for $35,000 when she broke her maiden at the Big A nearly three years ago. Expression has earned $364,000. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with two year old stakes action in this segment. We begin with Phillies at Tampa Bay Downs and the Sandpiper Stakes. Innovative idea, the two to one favorite, Richard Grunder has the call. Cheers for Sydney trying to take him start to finish. Coco's Wildcat runs at the leader now second. On the outside, R. Sassy Lass is set down for the drive third as they're into the stretch. Here's Coco's Wildcat and Luis Garcia from the outside, R. Sassy Lass in full stride. It'll be one of these two inside the final furlong. R. Sassy Lass on the outside. Coco's Wildcat is battling back gamely. Now R. Sassy Lass edging clear to take the sand Piper three parts of length. Three to one second choice R. Sassy Lass out finishes Coco's Wildcat officially by half a length. The fourth of five winners on the card for jockey Antonio Gallardo. The Florida bred clocked in one ten and two. R. Sassy Lass made all three previous starts at Gulfstream Park where she broke her maiden by nine and a half lengths for a $100,000 tag in her latest. Kirk Zady trains the winner. A $40,000 OBS April two year old. Our Sassy Lass has earned $86,000 for Averill Racing, Silver Oak Stable, and Gregory Kaufman. The filly by exclusive quality was bred in Florida by Brent and Crystal Fernand. Florida breads, race them or chase them. To Laurel Park for the gin talking stakes, Lake Sabago, the four to five favorite, Dave Rodman has the call. Comforter still out there. Comforter toast of Mayfair joined by Darling Sky 47 and Two Fists was a half mile. And here comes Lake Sabago circling on the far outside, driven along as they reach the top of the stretch. Lake Sabago sweeps up on the outside and Darling Sky there in between horses with Comforter down inside, weakened up in third position. And Gypsy Judy is fourth. They're coming through the final furlong. And Trevor McCarthy going to work on Lake Sabago. Lake Sabago. Lake Sabago kicking clear in the gin talking Stakes. Lake Sabago by Ashford Stud Stallion Munnings takes it by two links over Darling Sky. Trevor McCarthy aboard the Keeneland Sells graduate in 125 and 4. The John Robb trainee was a 27 to 1 long shot when she won the Smart Halo Stakes over the track last month. But she was bet down to 80 cents on the dollar for the gin talking stakes. The winner was bred in Kentucky by Mockmer Hall, Kerry, and Craig Brogdon. First or second in all five starts, Lake Sabago has earned $159,000 for Tim O'Donohue Racing Stables. The filly was consigned by Select Sales to the 2013 Keeneland September Yearling Sale, where she was purchased by Tim and Crystal O'Donohue for $22,000. Multiple stakes winning two year old filly Lake Sabago, the Keeneland Sales graduate of the week. To Golden Gate for two year olds in the Gold Rush Stakes. Unblunted, the 11 to 10 favorite, Michael Rona picks up the call. Around past the three eighths pole, and Ray Patch pioneering the trail in the Gold Rush. Leads Great Lou by half a length. Two lengths to stand and salute and unblunted. Sandor the Hound hanging with those horses in the middle of a line of three at the quarter pole. Broughton Kitten is next, has four lengths to make up at the top of the stretch, where it's Ray Patch giving a bold sight at big odds. Slips away two lengths to Great Lou in upper stretch. Stand and salute coming through second. Unblunted not doing much from Sandor the Hound, and Broughton Kitten's the widest runner. He's been Beginning to motor, a 16th to go, stand and salute, thrusts to the front, Broughton Kitten finishing furiously on the outside, stand and salute, Broughton Kitten, stand and salute by a neck. Stand and salute holds off the late charge of Broughton Kitten by half a length, Russell Bays aboard the Florida bred in 139 and 1. 
Stakes placed on debut at Santa Rosa, stand and salute was coming off a maiden victory over the track and trip. Jerry Hollendorfer trains the winner. Stand and salute has earned $71,000. The colt by St. Ann Dan was bred in Florida by his owner, Red Oak Stable. Florida breads, race him or chase him. To Tampa Bay Downs for the inaugural stakes. Supreme Justice, the 5-2 favorite. Once again, here's Richard Grunter. Midway in the turn, and Charlie's brother trying to pull the upset. Here's Catalina Red. He's traveling up sweetly on the outside and now moving to challenge. Read the news is all in. Duke of Luke and Gallardo sets him down for the drive on the outside as they're into the stretch. Catalina Red now strikes to the lead. Charlie's brother is toward the rail second. Duke of Luke is flattening out third and four lengths farther back. Lord Tyrion, but down to the wire. Catalina Red came to run today. And he wins off impressively. Catalina Red, another stakes winner from the first crop by Ashford Stead Stallion Munnings, draws off to break his maiden by a widening seven and a quarter lengths over Charlie's brother. Daniel Centeno aboard the Florida Bread in stakes record time of 109 and 1. Third in his first two starts on turf, the Chad Stewart trainee was coming off a second place finish in maiden company on dirt at Gulfstream Park West. A $55,000 OBS August yearling, the Colt brought $71,000 at the OBS April two-year-old sale. Catalina Red has earned nearly $45,000 for Anthony Lindsay. The inaugural winner was bred in Florida by Franz and Irwin Wiener. Florida breads, race him or chase him. To Laurel Park for the Marylander Stakes, Golden Years, the two to five favorite. Once again, here's Dave Rodman. Golden Years chasing the speed of here, the chatter into the far turn. It's two more lengths. Final prospect is third, sizzling. It tours is under pressure from fourth. Special invitation is in fifth. Made bail trying to pass quality wise. Still has eight lengths to make up. And Chase Lane racing to the back of the pack with Max Crown. And they make the turn for home. Golden Years, 46 and three fifths was a half mile. And Golden Years is set down and responds immediately. Opening up three lengths. On here, the chatter in second. Then sizzling Kator is his third. Final prospect is fourth in the final furlong in the Marylander. Nothing's gonna touch golden years. Coming home oh so convincingly under Victor Carrasco. Odds on favorite golden years draws up to defeat long shot sizzling Couture's by widening seven and a quarter lengths. Victor Carrasco aboard in 124 and four. Winner of his first two starts over the track, including the Maryland Million Nursery Stakes, Golden Years gets back on track after finishing fourth in the James F. Lewis III Memorial Stakes. The Colt by Not For Love was bred in West Virginia by O'Sullivan Farms and was a $120,000 yearling. Trained by Rodney Jenkins, Golden Years has earned $146,000 for Hillwood Stable. Golden Years paid 280 to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. The Spinthrift Farm Stallion of the Week is It's My Lucky Day, record-breaking millionaire from the Danzig Sire Line who captured Saratoga's Grade 1 Woodward Stakes this year, new for 2015. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Marathon Grade 3 Valedictory Stakes coming up in this segment. But we begin with three-year-old stakes action presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. To Gulfstream Park for the Aventura Handicap. At Treaties, the 2-5 favorite, Larry Comas has the call. So they move into the turn with Dude Man in front. And now at Treaties moves three wide. Tony B is in between those two. And then it's Urban Cool in fourth, two lengths off the lead. Shiva Curlin is next on the inside, and then comes Best Plan Yet. Around the far turn, Dude Man and Atreides. And these two are together coming to the top of the stretch. It is Dude Man in front. Atreides is right alongside as they turn for home. And now Edgar Zayas asks him to roll. And he's head and head with Dude Man. And Atreides now takes over the lead at the eighth pole. Atreides in front. And he's pulling away willingly now. Leaving Dude Man and the others behind. Urban Cool is third as Atreides comes home strong. He won it by five in the end. Odds on favorite Atreides scores by four and a half links over Dude Man for a 1-2 finish by Keeneland Sells graduates. Edgar Zayas up in 137 and one. Impressive winner of his first three starts over the track, including a 17-length romp in the Monarco Stakes. 
The Marty Wolfson trainee had his perfect record snap by a distant sixth place finish in the Grade 2 Indiana Derby. The Colt by Medina Doro was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Stone Street Thoroughbred Holdings, and is a half brother to Grade 1 stakes winner, Dreaming of Julia. A treatise has earned $120,000. Derby Dan Farm Stallion dialed in. Grade 1 Florida Derby winner by EP Indy's Horse of the Year Mine Shaft. Dialed in's first weanlings sold for up to $72,000 this fall. Watch for his first yearlings in 2015. To Woodbine for the closing day feature, the Grade 3 Valedictory Stakes at the marathon distance of a mile and three quarters. Turkish, the 5 2 favorite, Dan Noisel picks up the call. This 23 to 1 shot, Quiet Country, who takes them to the back stretch. Turkish, just off his flank in second. Managar starts to move up for Patrick Husbands now in third. Pender Harbor's back in fourth and three and a half lengths off the lead. Then we have Des Velo in fifth. Bingo Kitten makes up some ground to the inside. Alongside is Cozy Kitten. Then a royal blessing. They ran a mile in 45 flat. Quiet country. Turkish is breathing down his neck. And Managar poised just in behind them in third. Pender Harbor and Contreras. Contreras asked Pender Harbor to go on now. Down to the inside is a hard-ridden Dessa Vallo from off the pace. The white-capped Royal Blessing. And they're at the quarter pole. And Turkish, Turkish has made his move. And Turkish has swept to the lead. Managar is set down on the outside along with Pender Harbor. Royal Blessing's coming hard from way, way back. They're into the stretch. It's Turkish. But Royal Blessing, with long and powerful strides, is bearing down on Turkish. And it's Turkish in front. Royal blessing one last gasp lunge it's going to be close in the valedictory here is the wire turkish held on turkish gets to the wire a neck in front of royal blessing who was demoted to third for interference in the stretch pender harbor bumped up to second emma jane wilson the wedding jockey in 302 flat claimed by his current connections for forty thousand dollars in september Turkish won the mile and five-eighths allowance prep for the valedictory by 11 lengths. The five-year-old gelding by Istan was bred in Kentucky by Brereton C. Jones and began his career racing for his breeder and trainer Reed Baker. Tino Attard now trains the winner for Lawrence Cordes, who gets his first stakes victory after 45 years in the business. Turkish has earned $273,000. Coming up, a new track record in the Bayakoa. Time now for the Feature Race of the Week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Los Alamitos for fillies and mares in the Grade 2 Bayacoa Stakes. Tis Midnight, the 4-5 to five favorite. Here's the call by Frank Miramati. And they're off in the Bayacoa. Valiant Amelia's hustled out for the early lead. Yahilwa came away in good order and Tis Midnight in between them. Legacy is wrangled back now to take the third position. They're followed by Oscar Party and Warren's Vanitas at the back. Into the first turn they go, and it's Yahilwa setting the tempo, leads by a length. Tis Midnight, perfect trip second. Three more to Legacy in third. At the rail, Oscar Party a joint fourth with Valiant Amelia just outside of her. And Warren's Vanita on hold at the back. Six lengths covers the field. Five and a half furlongs to go. It's Yahilwa in front, three quarters of a length to Tis Midnight second. Legacy, an eager third between horses. Oscar Party hugs the rail and now moves up to claim third. Outside of them, Valiant Amelia, only three and a half off the lead. Warren's Vanita moves up willingly and trying to find room in between rivals. Tightly grouped a half mile from home in the Bayacoa. Yahil has been there throughout. Tis midnight, yet to be asked for her best. Now comes to challenge, heading to the three furlong point. A length and a half back to Legacy in third. Warren's Vanita needs to find some racing room. She's running on willingly. Oscar Party inside of her. Valiant Amelia could not keep up. Tis Midnight, the new leader at the top of the stretch. Legacy closing gamely on the outside. Yahilwa, Oscar Party behind them, and then Warren's Vanita. They're heading to the furlong pole. It's Tis Midnight. Warren's Vanita appears the only threat. She's running on strongly. 
Warren's Vanita coming after Tiz Midnight coming to the furlong pole. Tiz Midnight all out. Warren's Vanita up alongside. Warren's Vanita puts her head in front. Tiz Midnight is tough and battling back. It's a photo finish. Here it is. Close. Odds on favorite Tiz Midnight fights back to defeat 10 to 1. Warren's Vanita by head. Victor Espinosa, the winning jockey in 141 and 3. A close second to champion Beholder and the grade one Zenyatta stakes two starts back. Tis Midnight gets her first stakes victory. The Bob Baffert trainee was coming off a ninth place finish in the Breeders' Cup to staff. The four-year-old filly by Midnight Loot out of multiple grade one stakes winner, Tough Tis Assist, was bred in Kentucky by Carl Watson and Paul Whiteman, who owned the winner in partnership with Mike Pegram. Tis Midnight has earned nearly $335,000. Victor Espinoza with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winner's circle. We'll have two-year-old fillies in the grade one Starlet Stakes from Los Alamitos, along with two-year-olds in the rich Springboard Mile from Remington Park and stakes action from Aqueduct and Gulfstream Park next week here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week has been presented by Actistatin, Adina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, PBI Bank, Quill and Leather and Tack, Spendthrift Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at TBreadWeek.com.